Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. This is the SmartBot Robust 2800 gallon per hour submersible pump. It's a half horsepower. It also has a two inch output and can support up to a quarter inch debris into the impeller. This thing has a 25 foot lift height and should work well in a pond or swimming pool because it will uh, auto on, auto off and has a tilt off as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features of this thing. Jump over here to the pond and test it out. Let's take a look at what comes in this product. You've got the pump itself and then you have four different sizes of adapters. So this right here is a two inch opening. You've got an inch and a half. You've got inch and a quarter. You've got one inch and then three quarter. Now these three up here are NPT thread. And this one is garden hose, which is basically the same as NPT, but uh, for the three quarter. And you've also got this male to male coupling and that can be used to attach all of these to the two inch opening that's over here. And then it also comes with this 90 so you can get up out of a swimming pool or a tight hole there. Uh, so those are the things that it comes with. Uh, also an instruction booklet. So let's take a closer look at the pump itself. Here on the front, it has two different LED spots that will either be red or green based on the function. It says SmartBot, and then if you turn it over, it's got some information here. It has a 25 foot max lift height. It's 120 volts at 3.2 amp. Over here is where you've got your two inch opening, and that's where your water is going to come out of. And over here just has a logo, nice long cord with a piece of Velcro to hold it together. And if we spin this up under here, it's got the uh, place where it will read the uh, water level. It's uh, I think a fourth inch, it's really low. Uh, it's got this nice grate over the impeller so it won't be sucking up anything too big. I've stepped down here to the pond where you can see there's plenty of water here and also flowing over this rock face. I think this is deep enough right here for that to operate. So let's go ahead and plug this up to a power station so that we can set it in the water and hopefully get this thing to pump. So go ahead and plug this up. We should be able to see the green eyes of the smart bot. There they are. So we should be good to go. Now this thing does have that two inch output, but the only pipe I had was an inch and a quarter. So we're gonna be using that and then the garden hose. Let me go ahead and get this tightened on here. And then I'll go ahead and put the other end of the pipe here. And let's set this in the water and see if it begins pumping. I think the on off feature of the SmartBot has something to do with the ground of the power. And so my little power station I was trying to use would not ever turn this unit on. But I've got it back up here at the house and it is working fine on typical grid power. So let's go ahead and hook up the garden hose. I've got the three quarter inch reducer on and we will fill up a five gallon bucket and I'll show you just how quickly this thing will fill this up. And then we will hook up the inch and a quarter and we'll drain this tote again and you will see just how fast this thing will pull down this five gallons. I'm gonna set this end in the bucket. Go ahead and plug this power in. Now, as soon as I set this into the water, it's going to auto start and begin filling up this bucket. I've had this issue twice now with this little pump. The uh, noise is going down here, which means it's spinning water around, but it's not really pulling anything. So let's see if it's an issue with the, uh, the level. I've also noticed that once it's stopped the first time, you have to go over here, unplug it and plug it back up again. It's kind of finicky. All right, now it seems to be actually pulling water. Yes, it is. So check this out. It's a lot of water coming out of there. Now you notice whenever this thing breaks, 
which it's about to, it'll turn off, but there's no valve in there to prevent the water from flowing back out. Let's see when it's gonna stop. All right, so watch this. A siphon has just started and it's just gonna put the water right back in here. So that is something to consider. There's no valve in there. It's just straight. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you pull this out and stop that siphon or else it's just going to uh, fill your tote back up or swimming pool or whatever you're uh, trying to empty out. This unit is supposed to auto start, but uh, it doesn't seem to be doing that unless you unplug it and plug it back up because theoretically, if this water siphons back out like it currently is and back down in here, then it would start back as soon as it reaches a certain level. But you can see that it uh, is not starting on its own, even though the water is now back up to right there. So what I'm gonna have to do is unplug it and then plug it back up again to get it to start. Let's pull this out, let it drain out for a second. So it's totally reset. Okay. The lights are still on. Plop it back down. It does not start. Pull it out, unplug it, and put it back in. Not starting again. Now I'm gonna leave it in the water, unplug it, plug it back in. <laughs> All right, so it worked that time. Very finicky on this uh, power or auto start. We've seen what comes out of a garden hose. Let's go ahead and swap this back out for the inch and a quarter, and you'll get to see just how fast this will drain with that much larger pipe on. Let's go straight up on this and see how well it does. I've not unplugged it yet. Let's see if it'll auto start. Ah. <laughs> Let's see if it uh, has the tip over turn off by accident there. Yep. All right, so that's a good example of the uh, tip over turn off. And you can see just how fast it pulled down the water. All right, this time I'm gonna do it again and uh, hopefully we'll get to see the water come out the top. Let's see if it's gonna auto restart again. All right, one last time, let's watch the water flow out of here. Sucks that tote down so quick. It's hard to capture how much water it can pull. See if it's gonna auto off or just sit there and, and run. There we go, it's off. I've spent a good bit of time working with this now, trying to get the auto on feature to work with my power station, and it never would. I'm guessing you have to have earth ground to make this work, and I did not have that in that power station. So there are a few things that are a bit quirky with this. Whenever I set it down in the water and plug it up, it works. But as soon as it drains low and then you refill your water source, it does not auto start again. So this is not the kind of device that I was hoping where you could just set it down in your basement and it would drain out water as that water got up to a certain level. I think it's supposed to, but it's just not doing it. And for some reason, it seems to be with the uh, power cord. So. If it's in the water, you unplug and plug it back up, then it will start working again. A couple of times, I um, had it in the water, plugged it up, and you could hear the prop spinning in there, but it just never would actually lift any water. So it's got some strange stuff going on, 
As far as the design goes, it uh, is compact, lightweight, comes with plenty of attachments to uh, go from different pipe sizes, and uh, also has a 90 in there to get water up and out of a hole. Um, but it would be nice to have, I think, an on or off switch that you could just uh, push real quick and not have to run back and unplug this. So um, anyway, I'm gonna actually do some more testing with this unit on my tools, tech, and gear channel, and we'll see if we can get this thing figured out. But for right now, um, it does what it's supposed to when it comes to plugging it up and pulling water up, but as soon as you have it auto off, it uh, doesn't seem to want to start back again. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Seth Landahouse, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.